Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the morning routine. It is Tuesday morning, October the 10th, 2017, episode number 192, I think it is, right? Is it 192? 192. Wow, that's a big number. I can't believe it. That's awesome. Hope everybody's doing well. It is Tuesday. We have made it past the Monday, the first day of the week, which always seems to be the hardest, getting back into the groove. And uh, it's almost like the second day mentally, though, if you think about it, because on Sundays, usually right around 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, halfway through the day, all of a sudden your mind starts thinking about work the next day. So you basically lose half a day on Sunday just about thinking about work, right? And so then Monday is basically the second day per se. You know, you're tracking with me there? I don't know. It's uh, just a thought. So, but anyways, I hope all is well. So yesterday was a solid day over here. Got to spend some time with a friend and uh, got to get some work done. You know, good solid uh, day. Haven't shaved in two days, though. Maybe I should take care of some of the scruff that's hanging out on my face. I don't know. I guess we'll get to that. So busy day today, too. So maybe tonight. We'll see. But let's uh, let's see here. I got some stories for you this morning, some interesting things here today. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the stories that I put up yesterday. And uh, hey, Paul, good morning and happy anniversary, sir. Second anniversary to Paul kudos, my man. I hope everything is going as wonderful as you thought it would be, right? So is, is the dating officially over at the second anniversary or is that uh, the first anniversary that's over? Just, just asking, you know, us guys, we tend to run into these, uh, you know, we, we kind of go on a high and then we get down into the regular, you know, regular days somewhere along the line somehow. And we got to keep keep jumping up and getting to the higher level of dating again, you know? So, uh, but anyways, congratulations, Paul. That's awesome. Very excited for you, buddy. So, uh, good morning, Julie. Good to see you. And, uh, so I've got some stories here for you today. So we have been hearing lots and lots and lots and lots and even more lots than that about fake news. It's always on, on the, on the TV about, uh, Donald Trump and other people talking about fake news, fake news. Well, there is some truth to this, guys, and I, you know, I know you know that there's some truth to it, but to the extent of the truth, I don't know if we're all aware of it. And this article just highlights one aspect. There is many times that uh, my wife or somebody else is is scrolling through Facebook and they read something and they're like, "Holy cow, did you see this?" And I always, my first initial thought is, it's probably not real. Now, sometimes it is, but there are people who do not challenge the thought and they just accept it as a fact. So here is an article just to give you some insight. Um, the article title was called Russians Impersonate Real American Muslims to Stir Chaos on Facebook and Instagram. This is a real story out of the Daily Beast. Uh, Facebook group United Muslims of America was neither United, Muslim, nor American. And it actually was run by, uh, it was an imposter account on the world's largest social network that's been traced back to the Russian government. Now this is a, this is not a Donald Trump report. This is actually a news source. Okay. Um, so using the account as a front to reach American Muslims and their allies, the Russians pushed memes that claimed Hillary Clinton admitted the U S created, funded and armed Al Qaeda and so-called Islamic state. The imposter account bought Facebook advertisements to reach its target audience. It promoted political rallies aimed at Muslim audiences. The Kremlin backed trolls did all this while simultaneously at the same time using other accounts to hawk vir 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 Hello, virulently, virulently, wow, that word is hard for me to say this morning, Islamophobic messages to right-wing audiences on Facebook, such as in August uh, 2016 in Twin Falls, Idaho rally demanding we must stop taking in Muslim refugees. That was posted up by Russian government people impersonating American Muslim United Group. This is real, guys. The United Muslims of America Facebook group was impersonating an actual organization, organization, which made it even scary because there actually is an organization out there, uh, and these were impersonating to create division within our country. When we're looking through social medias and things like that, guys, it's always good to keep that filter up and to challenge the thought of what you see because there is a lot on there that is not real, as we've been hearing 
and uh, but maybe just not challenging. So interesting, interesting story. Next story I have for you, I heard about about uh, probably a week and a half ago, and I'm just getting to now to sharing it. Uh, and it's very so. I'm in the produce business, as you guys know. I talk about that often, and uh, I buy and sell produce across the country. And part of my job is that when I buy produce in one part of the country, and we need to get it to another part, we have to hire a truck in order to pick it up and take it someplace. Well, over the last two months, probably uh, the trucking industry is unbelievably difficult. It's very, very, very hard to find trucks, and the trucks that you find are charging higher and higher amounts of money because they can make it. There are several reasons for that. One is the big storm in Houston. They need lots and lots of trucks down there to deliver goods to that area as they rebuild and reconstruct and companies need to uh, deliver supplies and aid. And also they use trucks to store products because there's only so much warehousing down there, right? Second, big storm in Florida, huge. Huge storm down there. Same thing, more trucks go down there. So this takes away from the normal supply of trucks that we need to carry our goods back and forth. You know, you have you hit a supply and demand. Well, all of a sudden the demand is blown it all to heck and now we have a supply issue. Uh, so now we have a huge storm in Puerto Rico. Well, how have they been affected by this? Well, listen to this. A mountain of food, water, and other vital supplies has arrived in Puerto Rico's main port of San Juan on the giant container ships that you see coming into the ports. There is piles of them. At least 10,000 10, containers of supplies of food, water, medicine, and supplies were sitting at the San Juan port thir on, uh, this is two Thursdays ago. A shortage of truckers and the island's devastated infrastructure are making it tough to move aid to where it's needed. So they've got 10,000 containers of aid sitting in the port and no way to get it to the people of the country. 20%, only 20% of the truck drivers in the country have reported back to work. Um, on top of that, diesel fuel shortages, tangle of blockade, uh, uh, blocked roads, I mean the distribution of supplies is extremely challenging. Even contacting drivers is a problem because cell towers are still down. So you've got a country right now that has tons and tons of uh, products and services and aid that they need to put things back together and no way of doing so because they don't have the truck drivers to move it to where they need it. It's absolutely amazing how important, uh, this is when you realize, I should say, the importance of the guys who go out and know how to drive trucks safely and get goods delivered to where they need to be. So uh, so I last I heard, you know, and I don't know if it's a reality or not, I saw it somewhere, it could have been fake news on Facebook, I don't know, but they were actually trying to get drivers down to Puerto Rico to help get this stuff out there. So uh, pretty interesting though, but... So if you see a truck driver today, shake their hand and tell them thank you. Because honestly, you wouldn't have fresh produce if it wasn't for them. So uh, last little story I have for you today is based on if you have an iPhone and you have downloaded the new iOS 11 update on your thing. And they have updated some cool things to do with your camera on your phone. And I just thought if you were unaware, I was not aware. I don't spend a lot of time... I, I don't spend a lot of time learning the new things that are uh, on my phone. You kind of get used to the same apps, the same way of using it, and there could be groundbreaking information and I wouldn't know unless I read it in an article somewhere because I don't poke around on the phone. But there are some cool things that they've added onto the camera. I was on after I read this article, messing around with them last night, and they are pretty interesting. A lot of people have probably have been doing this stuff forever with other third-party apps. I guess the brilliance of it is that now supposedly it's wrapped right into the phone itself. So, one of the main things they have is more life and live photos. Live photos captures a bit of footage before and after you hit the shutter button. Now this has been on there for a little bit. It's that little thing right in the center when you're looking at your photo. It looks like a sun and if you hit it, it says live on and live off. And when you take your picture, it's like a couple seconds long image. Well, now you can take that image and just pick the photo you want to tweak, pick the photo you took, swipe up, and you'll see a list of effects to choose from. You can create a loop of the footage, play the footage forward and then reverse, or make those lights pop with long exposure tweaks. So there's some really fun things in there to do with the live photo feature of your camera if you have an iPhone with iOS 11. Uh, another thing that there is, there's more filters in it now. The iPhone camera app has filter, has always had little filters, but now there's a ton more in there. Uh, you can go in there and look. I was playing around with them. I actually thought about doing the morning routine with, you know, some kind of a monster face because they're kind of fun, but that would be really, well, 
I guess I kind of already have a monster face, so maybe I should have went for the pretty pins, prince face or something like that. I don't know, but that sounded weird. Pretty prince face. Where did that come from? I don't even know. Man, anyways, all right. Uh, another thing, this is kind of cool. So QR codes, we all know what they are. They got really, really uh, popular, then they faded. Well, they're back, and I've been seeing them more and more lately. Well, you always needed a third-party app in your phone to take a picture of a QR code to take you where you wanted to go. Well, the iPhone camera now reads QR codes built right into it. You don't have to go to another app. So if you see a QR code, just open up your camera, take a picture, and you're done. Um, and one last feature that there is on here is about space. Photos often take up a good chunk of storage, as you know, on your phone. Under the camera tab set in settings on your iPhone, you can tap on formats to switch between high efficiency, which compresses the images in half, uh, or you can leave it as JPEG, which um, keeps it in full size. By going to efficiency, you do not lose image quality. So if you're trying to save some room on your camera or on your phone, that's how you can do it. So that's the story I had for you on that one. So let's move on over, guys. Let's see what's trending today. The top 10 most searched things on Google yesterday were, let's see, what was yesterday? Yesterday was Columbus Day, Monday Night Football. Mm. What else was yesterday? Oh, Canada and Thanksgiving was yesterday. So let's see what was trending. Top 10 things. Number one, Santa Rosa fire. Number two, uh-oh. Uh, this is going to be embarrassing because they don't know how to say this name. And it's a Norwegian explorer. Frit Fridjof Nansen. Nansen I know because the Nansen Lodge, which is where uh, you know Norwegians can gather in Staten Island. Fridjof, F-R-I-D-T-J-O-F. Anyways, he is ranking number two in Google yesterday. That's, I wonder why. I have to read that story. Number three, Chicago Bears. Number four, Harvey Weinstein. Steen, that's the guy who just got fired by his very own company. Uh, number five is the Cubs. Number six is Anaheim Hills Fire. Number seven is Texas Tech. Number eight is Jamel Hill. Number nine is the Dodgers. Number 10 Earthquake. There was an earthquake in San Jose. So no mention of Columbus Day. No mention of Thanksgiving in Canada. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, that was the top 10 most searched things yesterday. So let's go see what's trending on the news today. Top of the list, Dodger, Dodgers versus Diamondbacks. Dodgers sweep the Diamondbacks, Diamondbacks and advance to the NLCS. Next, we have Texas Tech University. Texas Tech student accused of killing officer is caught. After that, we have Columbus Day, first appearance. Columbus Day nixed for Indigenous Peoples Day by more universities nationwide. What? Harvard University is the latest of a growing number of colleges to add Indigenous Peoples Day to its calendar. Wow. Okay. Uh, next, Ivana Trump. Ivana and Melania Trump's feud explained. Really? Do we really care? That's from the Washington Post, guys. Wow. All right, California wildfires. State of emergency declared as wildfires engulf California. Next is Anaheim, California. Sky over Disneyland grows orange due to nearby wildfires. Uh, after that, we have Jerry Brown. California governor signs drug pricing transparency law. Uh, then Diana Feinstein. As Feinstein announces re-election bid, Democratic war looms. Uh, and... Last, Star Wars. Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. The new trailer is out. And that is what's trending on the news today. Let's jump on over, guys, and let's get ourselves a passage of wisdom. Good morning, sister. Good to see you. Love you very much. Uh, let's see here. Today, our passage of wisdom today. Passage of wisdom today is two verses. Very simple. I was going to leave it as one, and then I added on the second verse in the passage at the last moment, okay? Um, so let's just, let's just look at one, and then I'll introduce the second one, okay? Today, we're going to do Romans chapter 3, verses 23 and 24, okay? Verse 23, that's what we're going to read right now. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, why would I want to share that verse with you? Here's a story. When I was a young lad, 
just a wee little grasshopper. I remember, I don't know how old I was, I was probably in my early, early teenage years when I was uh, not you know, listening and not doing the right things and kind of rejecting uh, the things that uh, were being pushed on me and was going the other way in, in, in rebellion. Anyways, I remember not wanting to go to church. And I remember thinking and seeing a visual that, you know, when there's a break, I've shared this story before, but you know, when there's a break in the clouds and you see the sun shine through and it's like a beam off in a distance down to the earth, you know, and it looks like amazing. Well, I pictured that that's what it looked like when a church gathered and we're singing and praising God, that there was this beautiful light going up through up to God. And myself, when I looked at myself and the things that I was doing that I knew weren't right, I knew they were wrong. I envisioned that if I were to go to church and be in church, that here is this beautiful light shining up, praising God. And in the middle of that beautiful light would be this black beam, which was me, right? Polluting this pure light of praise and worship to our Heavenly Father. And I was like, why would I want to go to church? One, feel uncomfortable. Two, pollute what these people work so hard to do. Well, guess what? I did not know at that time that everybody had their best face on and everybody puts on their great show. But at the end of the day, Romans verses chapter 3 verse 23 is true. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It wasn't just me. It's everybody. Now, the best part is verse 24. And all are justified freely by his grace, through the redemption that came from his son, Christ Jesus. For all have sinned, we're all in the same boat, but all are justified freely by his grace. Our Heavenly Father loves all of us, no matter how polluted our stream of black we may seem we're exuding. He loves all of us, and he has justified all of us by his grace, by the redemption that came from his son, Christ Jesus. That's amazing. There's no exception. The word all is all. It's not all asterisk. It's all. So there is some amazing encouragement to start our Tuesday. Let's pray and let's get this day started. Father, we thank you for this day. This Tuesday, this October the 10th, 2017, this one and only day that we've never had before and when it's all over, we'll never have again. We thank you for this marvelous gift of 24 hours to make account for something. Whether it's to make our kids feel more love than they've ever felt in their lives. Whether it's to make our spouse feel so cherished, invaluable, and irreplaceable that they can't help but walk around with a smile on their face because they know how loved they are by us. Whether it's to bless a neighbor or a coworker by an encouraging word or a hug or a, or a, or a helping hand, or whether it's just to, to, to bless a total stranger in some way, somebody normally that we wouldn't do, uh, you know, help or, or do something nice for, but we do. And maybe... It's to forgive somebody that we're carrying around a lot of stress and strain because we're having a hard time forgiving them. And maybe that's what today is for. Father, we thank you for this marvelous gift. And we thank you for the passage that you gave us today. That all of us have sinned. We're all in the same boat. But all of us have been given grace by you equally. Not one more than another. No one can outwork another one. You have given it to all of us because you love each and every one of us and have great things meant for us and that you have created us with intention and purpose. Help us today, Father, to discover what that purpose is. Help us to have the courage to embark on what that is. Father, I pray for the families that I'm, that I, that I'm aware of and the ones that I'm not that are going through a tough time right now, that are in strain and turmoil, and maybe they went to bed with tears in their eyes and maybe they're waking up this morning with tears in their eyes. Father, comfort them. Bring peace and guidance and love to their lives and however they may need it today. Father, we thank you for your everlasting and unfailing love. Amen. And that, my friends, is a wrap. So glad you guys were here today on The Morning Routine. I can't wait to be back here again tomorrow morning. And until tomorrow morning, today, don't forget 
to be exactly who you were meant to be, who you, you were meant to be. I love you guys. See you tomorrow.